Maids are people who follow and serve a master. Their tasks range from cleaning rooms, preparing rooms, and maybe murdering on the side. However, in some ways, the master also serves their maids. In a certain alley in Masuka City, a woman lies bleeding on the floor after her legs are cut off, while a maid cradles her severed leg. She's not walking away from this one. A news broadcast reports on a series of slasher incidents plaguing Masuga City. Victims have their legs cut off, but curiously, their shoes are found to have been polished, leading investigators to believe that the perpetrator has a peculiar mindset. Meanwhile, Kodo, a high schooler, accepts every single flyer and promotional poster handed his way. His friend, Tetsuya, tells him that he's allowed to turn them down. It's a groundbreaking concept, for sure. However, Kodo is overly considerate of other people's feelings, and he'd feel bad if he didn't accept the papers handed to him. His other friend, Saku, says that this is why Kodo tends to listen to the sales pitch of every door-to-door -door salesman that comes to his house. Kodo just can't find it in his heart to ignore them. Their conversation shifts to the recent slasher incidents happening throughout the city. When Tatsuya brings up the fact that the culprit is also a shoe polisher, it leads Saku to wonder if the perpetrator is a maid or something. Kodo looks behind him as another sheet of paper is handed to him. This time, however, isn't a restaurant worker trying to drum up some business. It's a maid dressed in what appears to be an elaborate costume. She calls Kodo master, and she hands him a paper that he allegedly dropped. Kodo is starstruck. Kodo muses to himself that every part of her maid cosplay looks spectacular and high quality. The woman commends Kodo for his attitude of being unable to ignore a person's feelings, even when he himself already seems overburdened. Such a devoted heart is magnificent in her eyes, and it makes him suitable to be her master. Kodo concludes that she's some whack job to generate. For the first time, he decides to walk away while he is still being spoken to. He retreats back to his friends, but they pretend that they don't know him. That's what he gets for talking to a girl. The maid, concluding that Kodo is having a hard time talking to her because of their environment, decides to go for a change of scenery. She grabs Kodo and carries him away. He's being kidnapped in broad daylight, and nobody's doing anything. His friends don't seem to care either. Tatsuya thinks that Kodo got what he deserved. He notices that Saku's face looks a little pale, and he explains that earlier, he was hypothesizing that the culprit could have been a maid. He starts sweating bullets. Did they just let their friend be kidnapped by a potential serial killer? Kodo frantically tries to get the maid to put him down, and she promptly does so. Seeing that she seems reasonable enough, Kodo decides to try and talk things out with her. The maid gently lifts up her skirt, and she introduces herself as Ursula. She has been looking everywhere for someone with the strength and fortitude to be her master. No matter how Kodo looks at it, this is clearly suspicious. At best, she's an overeager maid at cafe. At worst, she's that serial killer everyone is talking about. Kodo suddenly remembers the slasher incident, and he asks Ursula if she was the one responsible for the recent string of murders. Ursula nonchalantly tilts her head and says that she is aware of the culprit. In fact, that's exactly what she came to inquire about. She explains that the slasher incidents are the work of evil maids called Step Girls. Kodo's mind goes into orbit. Forget suspicious. Ursula seems downright insane. Ursula explains that maids were originally beings who served people, but Step Girls are the exact opposite. They're going around hurting them. It is these maids who have been causing the city so much trouble. But hey, at least their shoes are polished. Kodo struggles to comprehend what she's telling him. As far as he knows, maids are all about preparing meals and cleaning a rich person's home. Ursula tells him that he isn't necessarily wrong, but she reveals that the term maid originally meant us. The spirits or yakai are known by many names, but at their root, they are spirits called maids. Maids are, in other words, spirits that serve humans. The maids, as Kodo knows them today, adopted their name and meaning from these spirits. Ursula cannot abide by the existence of the step girls, so she needs Kodo's strength to take them down. The strength of a master, that is. Kodo takes a long, deep breath. What the heck does she mean by master, anyway? Ursula explains that he possesses the strength necessary to be a master. But upon closer inspection, she wonders if she captured a coward by mistake. Not only does Kodo not understand what's going on, but he can feel like he's being insulted too. Regardless, he doesn't think he's quite cut out to be a master either, since he can't picture himself giving orders to people. Ursula tells him that this isn't the strength she's looking for. The true strength of a master indicates a heart of devotion. She asks him what he thinks people called lords are. They are a door and looked up to by so many people. The kind of master she's looking for is like these lords, whom so many people look up to. A master who puts others first without taking into account their own situation. A self-sacrificial heart of a master. She observed Kodo accepting all those flyers from people he passed by. 
and so she witnessed a glimpse of that self-sacrificial heart. Kodo is flattered, but he has to ask her why she needs to get rid of the stepgirls to begin with. Before she can reply, her pocket watch chimes, and she looks to the side. Kodo wonders what's wrong, and he spots his friends, Tetsuya and Saku. Those bloody traitors abandoned him and are now looking for him. Kodo pops out of the bushes to talk to them, but as soon as he does, they fall, their legs suddenly severed from their bodies. Behind them is a horde of stepgirls, ready to chop off some more. Tatsuya hadn't even processed what had just happened. He can't seem to find his footing. The stepgirls grab their legs and start intently inspecting them. Ursula says that these are the evil maids, the stepgirls. Ordinarily, maids should be working and serving the people, but they have since become corrupt. Kodo tries to warn her that she is being attacked, but she needs no such warning. In one small twirl, Ursula kills every single stepgirl in her way with what appears to be a P-38 pistol. Ursula states that she is a maid, but not the kind of maid that serves or cleans. She is a Valkyrie maid, specifically trained to kill stepgirls. One of the stepgirls lands on Kodo, and he freaks out. Even though they are spirits, they still have flesh and blood. He hurriedly checks up on Tatsuya and Saku, but neither are conscious and neither can stand. Suddenly, the stepgirls that Ursula thought she had killed start coming back to life. She had expected as much, but it is still an ugly sight. Ursula remarks that if they have the gall to attack her, then the least they can do is to fix up their attire before doing so. Their ribbons are loose and the hems of their skirts are worn. Blood splatters on Ursula's face and dress, but it matters little. Valkyrie maids are built to take on any dirt and grime in their line of work. Meanwhile, Kodo applies emergency first aid to Tatsuya and Saku. He does his best to stop the bleeding, but there's only so much he can do. Tatsuya explains that he and Saku thought Kodo might have been kidnapped by the serial killer maid, but it seems like they were wary of the wrong maid. Kodo heads back to retrieve Tatsuya and Saku's legs, and that's something that Tatsuya really didn't want to hear. Kodo swears to bring them back. Tatsuya and Saku think that Kodo is the type to die young. Kodo returns to the battlegrounds, and he spots Ursula in the middle of the road. However, he senses too late that a stepgirl has snuck up behind him. In the blink of an eye, Ursula appears and shoots the stepgirl point blank. Kodo is horrified that the stepgirl was aiming for his neck when earlier she was just aiming for legs. Ursula says that this was just a means to make sure he wouldn't move while it did the latter. Kodo asks if he shouldn't have come back, but Ursula needs his strength. No matter how many times she shoots the stepgirls, they keep coming back from the dead. Thus, she needs Kodo's help. This is way above Kodo's pay grade, and all he really wanted to come back for were the legs of his friends. I'm not even sure if they can put that back together. However, since he came back, he wants to help. He asks Ursula how they can defeat them, and she explains that the only way to do so is for him to accept their servitude. If a master who is willing to accept their servitude appears, then the stepgirls will be satisfied, which means that all Kodo needs to do is let these serial killer stepgirls shine his shoes. Kodo asks if he'd die, and Ursula tells him to try and find a way not to. Kodo replies with four question marks. This is certainly not what Kodo was expecting. He thought that he'd use his master power and defeat them somehow. Ursula reminds him that the master strength she described was really just a matter of the heart. All he has to do is accept the stepgirl's servitude without dying, and it will really show her that he has the strength of a master. It's so simple, a child could do it. Ursula blasts another stepgirl in the face to buy them some time. If Kodo isn't willing to do it, then she'll just have to find someone else suitable to be her master. However, if that's the case, then Kodo will be unable to retrieve the legs of his friends. She'd even be willing to help support him to the best of her ability if he agreed to help her. That's her job after all. Kodo grits his teeth. This whole situation is ridiculous and unbelievable, but it's reality. His friend's legs are counting on him. Kodo runs straight into enemy lines. It's simple. He has to let them polish his shoes without dying. An attack barely misses him and he thinks that it is hopeless after all. He's really going to die here. Ursula tells him to focus on getting his shoes shined and to think about death later. A stepgirl pins Kodo against a wall and prevents him from escaping. Ursula rescues him by firing her gun, but now they're back to square one. Kodo falls and tumbles a short distance, right into the waiting arms of some stepgirls. Ursula kicks some fallen metal poles on the ground, forming a small defensive barrier between Kodo and the stepgirls. Kodo hastily removes one of his shoes and tosses it to the stepgirls, telling them that they can have them. The stepgirls quickly crowd over Kodo's shoe, taking turns gingerly inspecting and examining it before polishing it. Ursula harbors her own doubts that Kodo can exterminate these girls. 
Kodo's friends went through a horrific and traumatic experience, and she wouldn't blame Kodo if he resented the stepgirls for that. Even if he could, the stepgirls are repulsive monsters by nature, so it wouldn't be surprising for Kodo to want to see them go away. Even so, Ursula would be disappointed if that were the case. She fears that Kodo is yet another lost cause, and she'll have to find another master. To her surprise, Kodo gets up, and he approaches the stepgirls without ill intent or resentment. Kodo recognizes that the stepgirls wanted to save people, and they were just desperate for a master. He recognizes that the way they went about trying to serve people wasn't nice, because under no circumstances is cutting people's legs off a good thing, but he can see that their hearts were in the right place, and it'd be wrong of him not to acknowledge that. One of the maids suddenly swings her metal pole at Kodo's right leg, but he catches it before it can sever it. He calmly tells them that they don't have to polish this shoe. He extends his arm to ask for his other shoe back, and they obediently hand it over. His loafers look as good as new. Kodo looks at his shoe from all angles and is impressed by their work. Spectacular, he tells them. The stepgirls, hearing those words, are reminded of all the times they tried to polish other shoes, only to be met with screams of terror and fear. Not that their terror and fear were unwarranted, of course. Kodo thanks the stepgirls from the bottom of his heart. Satisfied, the stepgirls slowly fade away, but not before lovingly caressing Kodo's face. They vanished into thin air. Ursula congratulates him on successfully eliminating a stepgirl for the first time. She asks him if he is unable to stand, and he says that he is. At least he can still feel his legs, which means the stepgirls weren't able to cut them off. Ursula commends Kodo for exhibiting the magnificent strength of a master, and she is sure that those stepgirls were saved as well. She hands him a small potion to heal his wounds, and when Kodo asks for the legs of his friends, she holds them up. When they returned to Tetsuya and Saku, both of them had already passed out. They stuck their legs back on and fed them the medicine, and Kodo was forced to send the ambulance he called away. When Tatsuya and Saku regain consciousness, they have forgotten all about their encounter with the stepgirls, and they return to suspecting that Ursula is the slasher that's been going around lately. Kodo tries to figure out a way to explain her existence to his friends, but his mind comes up blank. Ursula stares at Kodo and says that he has persevered well. For a coward, that is. Kodo isn't sure if he should thank her for that. He sympathizes with the stepgirls, viewing them as tragically misunderstood. They were just trying to help. Ursula tells Kodo to do his best like this the next time they run into stepgirls. Wait, what do you mean, next time? Kodo is horrified that he has to do something this scary and nerve-wracking all over again, but Ursula bribes him with a hug. Kodo is confused by the sudden embrace, and Ursula apologizes for acting immodestly and rashly all of a sudden. She explains that, for some reason, she kind of admires him now in that sort of romantic sort of way. Tetsuya asks Kodo the exact nature of his relationship with this mysterious maid, and Ursula introduces herself to his friends. She declares herself Kodo's maid. That evening, Kodo is unable to get any sleep. When he heads downstairs, he discovers that Ursula has prepared for him a classic English breakfast served with tea. She had also baked some orange peel scones. It's three in the morning, and Ursula prepared all this the moment she heard Kodo waking up. It's only natural for a maid like her to do this much. Seeing all this, Kodo is assured that yesterday wasn't a dream. Kodo recently had a run-in with bad maids known as stepgirls. They were very naughty, and not in a fun way. In order to get rid of them, Kodo, a person whom Ursula deemed worthy of being a master, has to accept their service with an open heart. Ursula, on the other hand, is a good maid, but the good part is a stretch. Armed with her dual Walder pistols, she is a Valkyrie maid tasked with combating the stepgirls and enforcing peace. Kodo has thus been entrusted with eliminating these stepgirls while Ursula ensures his safety. At first, Kodo refused, since he only dealt with those stepgirls because Tatsuya and Saku's lives were on the line. Ursula allowed him to refuse his position but warned him, or rather guilt-tripped him, that there would be more casualties if he chose to ignore the stepgirls. Back in the present, Ursula tells him that she'll be heading out to eliminate some more stepgirls. Kodo is a bit worried that she's going off on her own, but she reassures him that she can handle herself. Kodo wants to help since he doesn't want any more people to get hurt. Ursula tells him that it would be a great boon if they could discover a stepgirl lair, but for now they should just stick to finding and eliminating them one by one. Kodo takes a sip of the tea Ursula prepared and says that it tastes good, Ursula is glad to hear it. Kodo has noticed that Ursula's heart and demeanor have softened ever since yesterday happened. When they first met, she seemed stern and scary. Kodo wonders if she's just pretending to act all soft-hearted and bashful, but she doesn't seem to be faking it. 
Ursula wants to head out right away, but Coda would prefer to wait five hours. When they finally do head out, Ursula is still in her maid outfit. This just won't do. Coda drags Ursula into a shopping center for a change of clothes because she sticks out, in his words, like a diamond in the middle of the road. Ursula bashfully asks if he was flirting with her there, but when he says no, she promises to refrain from having delusions in the future. Ursula is acting a little creepier than usual. Upon heading inside, Ursula checks her pocket watch, which is revealed to be a sensor that detects step girls. When a step girl enters its detection range, the alarm will sound and their location will be revealed. That sounds cool and all, but Coda wants her to pick out her clothes already. He doesn't really know fashion, much less for girls, so he defers to Ursula's judgment. However, since Ursula thinks that it is improper for a simple maid to choose her clothes, Coda decides to wing it. Ursula comes out of the dressing room wearing the outfit Coda chose for her, visibly happy that he did. Coda tells her to keep it on. Deep down, he wonders if Ursula was always this cute. Her personality certainly took a sudden turn yesterday. She seemed more like a ruthless, bloodthirsty assassin, but now she seems like a regular girl. Kodo and Ursula leave the store, while two of the staff members comment on how beautiful Ursula looked. One of them notices something strange on their front desk. She walks over to inspect it and discovers that it is foam. A giant sea urchin-like creature looms above her head. Meanwhile, Coda wonders if a step girl would even bother appearing in such a crowded place as this. Ursula explains that it is entirely possible since step girls don't choose when and where they manifest. They'll just have to deal with them if they ever pop up in a place like this. Suddenly, Ursula's pocket watch sounds. There's a step girl nearby. She lifts Kodo up, and they run toward their location. She tells Kodo to prepare for battle. They return to the shop where they were just in, and they fail to notice how incredibly spotless the floor is. The once full store is now eerily silent. Not a single staff member or customer is in sight. Ursula asks Kodo if he still knows what he has to do, and he hasn't forgotten. He has to accept with an open heart the servitude of any step girl he comes across. Kodo groans out that he doesn't want to die, and Ursula reassures him that his master's heart will surely be able to answer the feelings of any step girl they encounter. That's his master power, after all. Ursula glances to her side, and she spots a few customers huddled together in a corner, frightened for their lives. When they reach the front counter, Kodo discovers a strange foam-like substance. When he looks over the counter, he sees a staff member with terrible lacerations all across her body. Kodo flinches back, just as something heavy falls in the background. He and Ursula turn around and discover a customer in the clutches of a step girl, carrying a spiny brush. The girl begs for help. Ursula pushes Kodo aside, and she unloads several rounds of freedom into the step girl's chest. This is their opponent for today. The step girl is thrown against a wall, but already her wounds begin to heal. The step girl lets out an eerie moan, just as a civilian brings in a police officer to investigate the store. Ursula fires a few rounds into the shop's control console, causing the shop's steel roll doors to slam shut, trapping the step girl inside and preventing the police from entering. Ursula won't let her escape. Kodo attends to the injured staff girl, who is thankfully alive but barely. Kodo knows that he has to accept whatever service the step girl has to offer, but he wonders what exactly that is. Ursula hasn't a clue either. Yesterday was more convenient since they already knew what the step girls were after. She hands him a small healing potion and instructs him to bring the civilians to the back of the store for safety. In the meantime, she'll keep the step girl busy. She hopes that Kodo can figure out what this step girl wants, because if he can't, then they'll all die here. Kodo urges the girls to follow him. While Ursula engages the step girl, she hurls a clothes rack at it, telling it to pick out any dress she likes. Kodo lays the staff member on some soft cushions and he inspects the dozens of cuts across her body. This was the result of the step girl's attack, but he knows that it didn't mean to injure the girl. Meanwhile, the step girl spits out copious amounts of foam, nearly flooding the entire floor. Ursula, not wanting to ruin the clothes that Kodo chose for her, leaps up to ensure that they stay dry. She manages to land on her feet for now. Kodo tries to figure out more details from the civilians, but all they know is that the step girl suddenly appeared and used that whirly, spiky thing to attack them. They have no other information to offer. The door suddenly bursts open and foam begins to flow in. Kodo tells them not to panic. They're racing against the clock. Kodo racks his brain to figure out what service the step girl is trying to provide because they don't indiscriminately attack people. At least, that's what he's been told. One of the terrified girls starts panicking even harder, telling Kodo that she doesn't want to die. Kodo notices something about her and her friends. Only their clothes appear to be torn. 
If they were attacked by the spiny wheel that the step girl was carrying, then this should be covered in cuts like the staff member. Kota dips his hand into the foam and he figures it out. He runs back into the store to tell Ursula that he's figured it out, just as he sees her clothes being ripped apart. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Ursula covers herself up, and Kodo apologizes. Ursula reassures him that only her clothes were torn during the attack, but if Kodo's hunch is right, then the stepgirl's next attack will be different. Ursula avoids another attack from the stepgirl, but the attack ends up damaging the steel doors, keeping the police and bystanders out. Ursula covers herself up, and Kodo asks them not to look. They're fighting for their lives over here. Kodo has a plan to take down the stepgirl, but Ursula needs to pin her down for a second. However, he is mindful of the current state that Ursula is in. If only those bystanders would go away. Ursula agrees to his plan, but she asks Kodo to look away when she pins the stepgirl down. Kodo agrees. He may have misjudged her. He thought that Ursula was scary, but she has emotion just like any other girl. Ursula mercilessly unloads her entire clip into the stepgirl without an ounce of remorse. Ursula asks the civilians to clear away because they're getting in the way of her work. She then leaps toward the stepgirl and tackles her to the ground while avoiding the dangerous spins of the spike wheel. Ursula catches Kodo staring at her, and she becomes shy again. She has no problem when other people see her as an efficient killing machine, but she can't bear it when Kodo is looking at her. Ursula has two sides, the cute girl who acts bashful and says hi, and the scary girl who acts like a cold-blooded murderer and says bruh. Kodo quickly runs up the stepgirl just as she is recovering and he tackles her to the ground again. He asks Ursula to throw him a nearby wiping cloth and he puts it in the stepgirl's hand, which he places against his face. He tells her that she doesn't need to use a scour or to scrub hard. She just has to gently wipe. Based on everything he's observed so far, Kodo deduces that this stepgirl is trying to give people a bath, removing their clothes, making lather, and using a scour. The stepgirl was only undressing her apparent victims so that their clothes wouldn't be wet, but the staff member was torn to shreds because the stepgirl had already scrubbed her. Just like before, the stepgirl's intentions were pure, but the method was all wrong. Kodo thanks her for trying so hard. With her servitude fulfilled, the stepgirl peacefully passes away, and she disappears into thin air. Kodo is exhausted. He doesn't get paid enough to deal with this. The moment the stepgirl disappears, Nearby onlookers lose their memories of what just happened. Ursula carries Kodo home and makes sure that he isn't injured. Kodo has just one question for her. He knows that she's become quite fond of him, but he can't wrap his head around why she is. Ursula says that Kodo is straightforward and headstrong, which she partly attributes to his master power. She asks him why he wants to know so badly, and he replies that he was just curious. Kodo hates seeing people sad. He wishes that no one was sad and that everyone would just smile. The next morning, Ursula wakes him up so they can go out and eliminate some more stepgirls. Damn, they're seriously going to do this every day, huh? Stepgirls are a sad, misunderstood existence whose only purpose in life is to serve, but they go about it the wrong way. It has been three days since Kodo was thrust into a position to eliminate them. Kodo tells Ursula that he's seeing a dentist today. Ursula doesn't know what that is and he explains that it's sort of like a doctor, but for your teeth. He admits that he's terrified of doctors. He hates the sound of the drill, and it hurts when the anesthesia is administered. But since it'd hurt even more without the anesthesia, Kodo has no choice but to suck it up. Ursula flat out calls Kodo a coward. Kodo asks her if she's scared of anything, and she gives it some thought. Ursula ends up accompanying Kodo to the dentist, since she's scared of one thing, Kodo being in danger. If something were to happen to him, she'd become agitated. Thus, she couldn't accept him going to the dentist, knowing that he's so scared to go. It's embarrassing enough to be accompanied by a girl to the dentist, but on top of that, that girl is a maid. The sound of the drill causes Kodo to flinch. Ursula acknowledges that it was quite a high-pitched, shrill noise. Kodo has flashbacks of his previous encounters with that dreaded drill. At eight years old, he fought back tears while the dentist stuck the drill into his mouth. He reacted the exact same way when he was nine, when he was ten, and so on. Just remembering all this is traumatic for him. Ursula asks Kodo what he'd do if he were trapped in a room with drills on all sides. He'd be scared out of his mind, obviously. However, if there were a person trapped in that room who needed help, then Kodo would run in without a second thought and try to help them. That's what Ursula finds so admirable about him. One of the dentist's aides calls his name and he stands up. Ursula does too, but he tells her to just wait in the reception area. As Kodo is led into another room, he muses that Ursula is overestimating his integrity and character. 
While he definitely want to help someone in an unfortunate situation, he feels that he'd be too scared to save someone from a room filled with drills. However, he'd feel that he could if Ursula was there. Koda was only able to eliminate those stepgirls from before because of Ursula. If she weren't there, he'd be dead a long time ago. Koto sits on the reclining chair while the dentist starts by examining the inside of his mouth. Koto closes his eyes and braces himself for the pick and drill. When he hears the drill start to whir without him receiving anesthesia, he opens his eyes to discover the dentist being attacked by a stepgirl with a drill-like appendage. Immediately, Koto hurls a chair at the stepgirl and urges the dentist to escape. Just as Ursula had warned him the day before, a stepgirl really can appear just about anywhere you least expect them to. To make matters worse, this stepgirl has a drill, Kodo's one weakness. Ursula pops in behind him and says that it is time to work. Ursula remarks that it is clear what this stepgirl wants to do. She wants to conduct some dental treatment. Kodo asks if that's even something a maid can do, and Ursula replies that stepgirls can do anything. Just like before, the stepgirl will disappear once her service has been accepted. Kodo is afraid that accepting such a service might kill him, and Ursula says that it probably would, so he better find a way to not die. As usual, Ursula keeps the stepgirl busy while Kodo evacuates everyone else. The stepgirl thrusts her drill straight through the dentist's chair, and Ursula leaps away to avoid them. The stepgirl rips the chair apart, but Ursula unloads her clip into the stepgirl's head. The stepgirl's head slowly grows back, but it doesn't matter as long as Ursula keeps shooting her as it revives. Kodo seems like he'd need more time to evacuate the others as well. When she sees one of the customers push Kodo aside, she takes a deep breath to rein in her anger but she is fatally distracted. One of the dentists volunteers to call the police, but Kodo tells him that the police won't be much help in this situation. Kodo turns around, only to see the stepgirl looking over Ursula's slumped body. Kodo sees that there's blood on the drawer. It's Ursula's blood. Kodo is frozen with fear. When the stepgirl begins revving up her drills again, Kodo knows that he has to act. He starts making loud noises to attract the stepgirl to him, but all that does is paint a target on his back. Kodo manages to slip away in time, and he is able to retrieve the injured Ursula. He kicks down one of the drawers to aid in his escape, and he runs away from the stepgirl as fast as he can. He makes it to the exit, but just as he opens the door, the stepgirl catches up to him. The best Kodo can do is throw Ursula out the door. He's been stabbed, but at least Ursula is alright. But still, he's been stabbed. That can't be good for anyone. The stepgirl removes her drill, and Kodo slumps to the floor. His breath becomes more ragged. He's experiencing the one thing he's scared of the most, dying. He doesn't want to die, not here. Dying might make the pain stop, but he doesn't want to die. He doesn't even know if Luffy has found one piece yet, not like this. As his vision fades to black, he sees Ursula slowly getting up after recovering from her injuries. When she looks back and sees Kodo slowly bleeding out on the floor, she is devastated. Kodo doesn't like that look on her face. He hates seeing people sad. After Kodo's visit to the dentist when he was 12, the dentist told him that he was brave. His father, on the other hand, thought otherwise. He blames Kodo's mother for leaving them because of his misbehavior. There was a time when all Kodo knew was sadness, so he strove to make it so that nobody else had to feel that way. He wanted people to smile. Ursula would be said if I died is what prompted Kodo to get up. It's not that he doesn't want to die, but rather he can't die. Kodo stumbles to his feet and makes his way to the door. He's still alive, and he's still breathing. All he has to do now is find a way to accept the stepgirl's service. Ursula pushes the dentist away and runs face first into the door. The dentist tries to tell her that police are already on the way, but she starts firing her gun into what appears to be almost bulletproof glass. Kodo is still alive, and his brain still works. That means he still has a chance. He tries to find a way to let the stepgirl serve him without him dying. Ursula finally crashes through the glass and discovers Kodo slumped against the wall with the stepgirl over his body. Kodo realized that the stepgirl didn't mean to run him through. She just missed him because he was moving too much. All the stepgirl wanted to say was I'm sorry. Kodo thanks her for trying to help, and this satisfies her enough to pass on. Kodo's breathing becomes more labored, and he asks Ursula if she has any medicine. She hands him the potion, and he explains that all he did was tap his tooth with her drill because it had stopped working. He's just glad that he made it out of this one alive. He pats Ursula on the head, and he apologizes for making her worry. When they return home, Ursula calls Kodo strange. She admits that she was at fault today. She was distracted and allowed herself to get knocked out. Because of that, Kodo was needlessly injured. Though Ursula wants to take her own life to atone for such a grave sin, she still has to serve him. 
She promises never to let this happen again. She turns around. Kobo never places the blame on her or on any of the step girls. She knows that he is capable of eliminating the step girls, but she asks him why he thanks them. He explains that the step girls are acting for his sake. During his near-death experience today, Kodo also found something he was more afraid of than dying. When he was stabbed by the step girl's drill, he was scared. But then he thought of how scared and sad Ursula would be if he died, and to him, that was even scarier. The step girls want to serve, but they are feared. They have nobody who will accept them. Kodo wants to be the one who saves them. Ursula playfully calls Kodo a coward. He isn't scared of death or of drills the most, but of someone being sad. He truly has a master's heart, full of love, devotion, and self-sacrifice. Ursula has longed to meet someone with a heart of gold like his. Ursula promises to do her best and not be sad, to the best of her ability. Maids are dedicated to their masters, but a master must also be dedicated to their maids, such as the immortal bond between master and maid. Meanwhile, a man frantically grips a stepgirl, telling her that all she needs to do is shut up and do as he says, Ursula included. He begs the stepgirls not to leave him, because he is their master. Who is this mysterious generic NPC?